Thank you very much indeed, and welcome back to the second day of the Royal GP Network Conference, where um, we've had the political session this morning, and I'm delighted to introduce to the Chair Chai Chua, uh, who was ex-CEO of the um, Hutt District Health Board, uh, and currently the um, National Director of the National Business Unit of the National Health Board. Is that right? It's a mouthful, isn't it? It, it did incredibly <laughs> well, a bit like the cooking. Um, and I've attended most of your message this morning and thoroughly enjoyed it, by the way, as indeed the crowd. I would love, if possible, um, we've got to sort of condense what you were saying sure. into 10 minutes. So um, if you were to summarise the message you were trying to get across to people this morning, how would you summarise it in just a few minutes uh, from uh, the very lovely talk you gave? Uh, a couple of key words then. Um, one is uh, implementation. Uh, second key word is leadership. And third key word is innovation. Um, so, one, uh, put the three words together, um, I think we know what we have to do. Um, so we have to concentrate on looking at how we actually implement. But to do that really well, we need um, leadership all around. Um, but when we're leading and implementing things, we also need to be innovative. And when we talk innovation, uh, what the health sector needs is not uh, sustaining innovation, but what I call more disruptive innovation. And I talked a little bit about that, what that means. Excellent. So what changes can we on the coal face anticipate to see over the next, say, 10 years? What, uh, how, how is it going to look differently? Oh, well, 10 years. Um, I came across an interesting book uh, recently about what uh, the world will look like actually more in 20 years, but 10 years mm -hmm. and 20 years, well, time goes by We're quickly. Quick, quick, we'll we'll, quick, we'll quick, be around quick, by then, that's quickly. fine. Um, I think that the whole progress of scientific breakthrough and impact on health, my personal view will radically change how health is provided. So currently, the, our health system is moving through a change where we are aware that most uh, health care needs to be done, not in the hospital, but actually out in the primary care in the community. I think that in the next 10 years, we'll see a much faster progression down that line. The whole emphasis of um, the individuals and the family committee playing a greater role will also play a big part. And I, I think that we will also see that as people live longer, a greater contribution of the elderly actually playing a part not just with themselves, but actually with each other around how they support each other in terms of their uh, health and well-being. So for us as uh, rural general practitioners or people working in rural general practice, how, how do we need to respond to those changes? Um, I think in many ways, uh, as rural practitioners, you're a lot closer to where, where, where the rest of the sector need to go because you're already working very closely with the rural community and you already know what it means to actually sort of um, use all uh, you know, the ex resources that exist in the community. Um, I think, I guess, it's just to watch what's coming down the line, I think particularly around technology. Uh, I think that you know, uh, in many ways the rural practitioners are fast adopters of technology because you have to. Uh, and I think in, in some ways just watch how, how we use it. But if you look, but perhaps to look at how technology fits in with the changing nature of the workforce that you're recruiting to come into to work in the rural community. Because I'm sure you're well aware that the younger people coming through have a different interpretation of the technology. Mm. Certainly. So you mentioned the word workforce. Are we going to see a different type of workforce or simply just an expansion of what we've currently got? I think workforce would need to change anyway because if you think about the, the scientific breakthrough uh, and the greater role uh, the individuals and families and community play in the health and well-being. So increasingly, I think, and I remember actually Harry Pert saying to me one day that increasingly I think uh, clinicians will become interpreters and facilitators as opposed to... Uh, you know, once upon a time, they found their own knowledge. And I think that's the increasing, that's the role. That, that's, uh, I think you paid us a great compliment. I certainly, yeah, we've all heard the expression, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think we, uh, we've all got our um, axe to grind on this one. What problems do you see at the moment, if you were to look, do a snapshot of where we are? What, what is broke that needs fixing urgently? I mentioned 10 years. How about the next 12 months? <laughs> what next 12 months? Um... I talked a little bit about the challenge of the funding, um, but I think that people get focused on funding too much. I think what we have to manage through, and that's not next the next 12 months, perhaps over the next couple of years, is not forget why we're here. We're here really 
more for improving patient care and well-being and improving access, but taking greater responsibility of how we use the resources. Right. And so there's a New Zealand triple aim, and it talks about those three facets. So when, as we look in the next, forward to the next 12 months, as uh, the funding becomes uh, tighter, there's still an increase, um, then I think that when the sector responds to that, it's important to remember the New Zealand triple aim. You can't do one or two, you have to do all three. That's refreshing to hear. Now, you mentioned leadership before, and it was a lovely uh, talk you gave on, on, on leadership. Um, so where, where do you see that leadership coming from? And how, I suppose, the riders, that question is, how can we help you, so to speak, provide that leadership? Uh, I mean, I talked a little bit about leadership need to be at multiple levels. Um, and, and I suppose um, the obvious place to start is the people who currently hold positions of authority. Uh, and I, I think it's beholding on people like me who hold this authority to actually think about how we exercise that authority and leadership. Because I think that if we exercise it in a autocratic or a cottage style industry or an industrial era style leadership, it is not what is required. Uh, we actually have to exercise a style of leadership much more appropriate for what we call, what I call the knowledge based era, which requires, if you like, leaders to not always need to lead from the front, but be comfortable at times to lead in the middle or even from the back. So for us uh, as the Royal GP Network, how can we engage with you to sort of steer things through? And I think we've got a vested interest in the primary sector and uh, um, you did mention sort of Des Gorman's uh, message as well, the devolution of, uh, uh, of work from the secondary to the primary sector. So how can we work with you with that one? Yeah, I, I, I think the, you know, we talk a bit about the progression of where the future lies, about the movement in the health sector, more from moving from the hospital sector to primary and community. It's actually working uh, with those who govern and manage and practice medicine in the secondary sector about helping them to manage the change and the transition. Because my sense is that intellectually they understand that and they want to be part of that, but it's quite threatening to them. Mm, it is. Because I think that you know, they have to give up something in order for them to do something different. Likewise, I think for the primary community sector, you have to give up something so that you can actually take something new. So there's almost a marketing requirement for, for, for the necessities of change there. H how can you see that being marketed in effect? Because as you rightly say, it will be threatening to many different parts of the sector. Yeah, I think marketing is probably quite a commercial word and I think it doesn't work in the health sector. I think what we need is much more of a uh, much more opportunities to have genuine conversation and discussion about things that really worries us, things that really threaten us, things that we fear about if we give things up or if we take new things on. Because often I think that we are prepared to talk about those things in general terms, but actually don't, uh, don't go near enough around this, the real issues that really need to be put on the table, if you were the elephants in the room and be comfortable to be able to have the, the robustness of the dialogue so that we can actually collectively look at saying, okay, who needs to give up something and who needs to take something and who else needs to give up something so that somebody else can take something. And it, ne it requires a level of maturity. It requires some real strength in leadership to facilitate the right environment for that sort of conversation to take place. Mm, that's well put. Let's um, completely change tack, if I may, and um, notwithstanding what you've just said, but if I was to give you a magic wand right now, um, <laughs> and you could wave it, and you could see three changes instantly tangible with the health system, what would those three wishes be? Um, next 12 months? Yes, no, I'll give you 12 months. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'd like to see more uh, opportunities for consumers, patients and their families to play a greater role, to be much more prominent uh, in terms of the changes we're making, in terms of participation early involved in that, that's one. Um, the second one is much more practical, which is um, there's a big push for clinical integration, to, uh, more services to be provided in a primary care setting. Um, we cannot invest in two places, 
So if we're going to make the investment in primary care, we have to help our secondary care and hospital colleagues to reduce or manage or stabilize the acute demand. Right? So that's two. Okay. Last wish. Last wish. I'd like us to think about um, setting the foundation for a more deliberate uh, development of a leadership program for those of us who work in health and That's those to follow. Three gorgeous wishes. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time, but I really must thank you very much indeed for taking your time to come and talk to us today. I really appreciate that. And, uh, no pleasure. I wish you well with your three wishes. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. is a man who never sleeps and um, manages to cram 36 hours into every 24. Um, the chairperson of the Royal GP Network, Joe Scott Jones. Joan, thanks for coming again. Um, Hi, Buzz. And your busy schedule. And, and um, we've had a very busy uh, 24 hours, really, and uh, you've been to uh, probably about the last 10 sessions, and I've no idea how you did it. I, I think you used the Harry Potter time turner, I think, to manage to go to them all. Um, but so we've got a, uh, about 10 hours of meetings you've been to, and uh, it'd be lovely to summarise them all in the next 10 minutes. Um, uh, how, how have the last uh, 24 hours unfolded with the conference? The, thank you, Buzz. I mean, my, I do not have superhuman powers, and um, there's been things that uh, have been going on which I haven't been able to get to, which I really would have liked to, I have to say. I, I, I didn't get into the uh, Rural Nurse Forum, uh, which happened yesterday. Um, the, I'm delighted we're interviewing those after you. So oh, fantastic. There we are. That, oh, well, that's, that's, that's good. Great. So I, like, I don't have to talk about nope, that then. Nope, that's the, that um, uh, I didn't get into the Rural Hospital Network um, Forum, which was happening through the day yesterday as well. The, um, but I, um, I did pop into the postgraduate um, G generalist uh, training program that the Royal College of GPs was running for um, rural uh, teachers of uh, postgraduate year two um, uh, trainees. Um, and um, fantastic to see that uh, uh, level of um, engagement with uh, training people in rural practice. Um, certainly, you know, that's what we need. We know that um, taking people um, into rural communities, training them in rural communities, giving them the opportunity to see what life is like living and working in a rural community really does help them to make decisions about a rural career in the future. Um, so we're fantastic that that's happening. So we've got some youth coming in from the bottom to help you and I as we fall off the top. Yes, yes. I mean, and um, uh, that um, those students, uh, some of those students will have been involved in the uh, rural immersion programs um, in Otago and uh, and Auckland. Um, some of them may have been lucky enough to start getting involved in the rural health interprofessional immersion program, uh, which um, has been sort of established in Wellsford for for, for quite some time, um, but has been extended into um, Fagatani and Gisborne uh, recently. And um, the, yeah, so there's lots of opportunities for training, um, not just of um, for for, uh, for medics, but for uh, physios, pharmacy, um, nursing um, in in rural communities, which is um, is great to see. So, what is new? What what's, uh, what what have we learned this year, which um, has been brought to the conference? The um, so far, the, um, for me, the, the other where I spent most of my time yesterday was in the Division of Rural Hospital Medicine because uh, I'm a, a new uh, grandfathered fellow of the Division of Rural Hospital Medicine. Thank you very much indeed. The, um, and, uh, and, and that role, I'm, I'm also been told I am now an educational facilitator and a mentor to um, another rural hospital uh, registrar. So that... Um, the, there's been an, an exponential growth in the number of people who are going through that fellowship training program. And we, we, we talked about this yesterday. There, there's certainly a, a need being created, um, especially I was talking to Chai Chua, who was talking about the devolution of uh, um, work from the secondary sector to the primary sector. And so obviously we need to expand our workforce accordingly. Are we in a position to fill that hole, do you think? N no, I don't think we're in that position to fill that hole completely as yet. But the, uh, the bare bones of what we need, uh, I think, is, is, is in place. Um, not, it's, it's not just about um, the extended role of um, the individual health providers um, so that um, you know, pharmacists, nurses, um, doctors are working at the peak of their scope. Um, it's also about having the, the technology that enables that to happen as well. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the presentations later on in the conference about um, you know, what the cutting-edge uh, technology that's available to us. Uh, fair point, too. And we've also had a few political sessions as well, and um, uh, you've managed to attend some of those. 
the, um, I was at a couple of general meetings uh, that were held uh, last night, the Division of Rural Hospital Medicine and the Rural Chapter of the, um, uh, uh, the College of General Practitioners uh, as well. And um, yeah, those, it's, it's really heartening. I find it fantastic that um, organizations like the Rural Hospital Network, um, the Division of Rural Hospital Medicine, the Rural Chapter, choose to use this opportunity to come together um, to, to run those, those business things which are you know, necessary in the life of any organization. But great that they use the Rural Network as their, uh, their opportunity for that. You know, it's, um, it really um, uh, enhances the life of these conferences and increases our ability to connect with each other uh, across the whole of the health sector. Mm. Something I'm really looking forward to next year um, is expanding that into more community organisations. We had our Rural Health Alliance uh, New Zealand Day, out here on New Zealand Day on um, Wednesday. And um, the, I just heard today of another couple of um, uh, member organisations for RANS. Um, but so next year I can really see that being a big feature of the conference and having a lot more of the community voice here, um, which I know is one of Chai Chua's wishes that he wanted for the, um, uh, for the health sector as well. So uh, it certainly is our wish as well. That's fantastic. And we had uh, Tura Flavel as well talking this morning. I didn't manage, didn't manage to get to his. Did you manage to get to his session? Yes, yes, yes. And yes. So what, what was his message um, to, to, to the Minions? Tura Roa was um, talking about um, the Māori Party, of course, and its um, uh, focus on Fano order. Um, the appalling um, statistics that uh, still remain of that discrepancy between uh, Māori health outcomes and Pākehā health outcomes. And um, s through um, initiatives like um, Fano Order, um, uh, the hope that we'll start to see some of those um, uh, uh, um, issues being addressed. The problem we have is that the real outcomes that matter to people, as a diabetic, do I still have both legs? Am I blind? You know, am I on renal dialysis? Those sorts of problems take an awful long time to arise. Um, so it's um, deciding. The, or finding the measures that are useful for us to determine what matters to people about their health um, that can be measured and, and seem to be affected in the short term. My feeling is that's going to come to be um, quite a subjective um, measure. We're going to be asking people more about how they feel about um, their interaction with the health system. Um, did they get what they felt that they needed? Um, you know, did they feel that they've moved further on? Um, the, um, they're very soft measures at the moment, um, but they're really important. If we don't get that engagement of people into the community, uh, from the community w with the health services, we're not going to get the long-term outcomes that we really want. But, yeah, it's a long road. It is, it is. Are we on it? Are we on the right track, do you think? Absolutely. I, I'm excited about my role in rural health. Um, as chair of the Rural General Practitioner General Practice Network. Oh, gosh, I did it myself. The, um, <laughs> the rural, as the chair of the Rural General Practice Just say Network. Just GP, you'll be <laughs> covering all the problems. <laughs> the, um, uh, the Rural General Practice Network, I have to say, covers a lot more than just rural general practitioners. Um, and, um, yeah, I, 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 um, I, I find myself having to commonly sort of correct people on that. So typical that I would nervously sort of uh, stumble on those words. But the Rural General Practice Network uh, is a, an organisation which is um, strongly uh, involved in moving a lot of these ideas forward in taking... Um, some of the ideas that um, Te Ororo was talking about and Chai Chu was talking about and actually implementing them, um, which, uh, um, yeah, it's great to be involved in the policy development, but, you know, I, um, it's exciting. It's exciting to be doing what we're doing. Mm, that's fantastic. So in 10 seconds, are we in good heart? Um, yes, I think we are. The... Um, I once attended a Rural General Practice Network conference where I felt um, everybody was so flat and down and, um, and it was because of the environment that we were working in at that time and this was some 10 years ago. Um, now, you know, people are smiling and um, I think enjoying the process. There's, um, you know, it's a great feeling in the conference floor at the moment. Fantastic. Well, Joe, I really appreciate you coming. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks again, uh, You've got the very privileged position of sharing the settee with uh, two wonderful nurses now are going to come on. But, Joe, I do appreciate you coming. And um, it's now my...
absolute delight to um, bring to the um, settee, as we described earlier, we've had the Rural Nurses Forum, uh, and Deb Bailey, um, who's a rural nurse in Kaikoura, and Sharon Hansen, our first ever rural nurse practitioner, now working in Tamuka. Uh, and you've been involved with the um, Nurses uh, Forums, and uh, uh, Joe just introduced it before. Now, we've only got about 10 minutes to summarise what I suspect is many, many hours of fascinating <laughs> presentations. So... Um, how has it gone and what have been the highlights for you? And in particular, if um, I hadn't attended the conference and wanted to know what did I miss, what did we miss? Um, I think the nursing council being here, Yeah, that was a really important um, thing that's happened this year that we haven't had in the past. Mm. Mm. And just building that relationship between the nursing council and thinking about what it is rural nurses need and, mm. and how we function mm. in rural. And I th think that it was probably the first time, you know, that they were actually, they came to our party and um, to hear some of the issues that we face as rural nurses um, in terms, and so they presented two of their newest documents, which is the Professional Code of Conduct as well as the Professional Boundaries. They're both two documents that they've recently come out with. And so we were able, and as we all recognize in rural, the, those boundaries and issues, those lines sometimes get a bit blurry, mm. and um, but we all are passionate about what we do and want to provide the best care that we can. And that you are. We talked about before. I mean, the, the nursing in the rural sector is the backbone. Really, we sort of rely and we lean on you hugely. Mm. So with the nursing council coming, uh, we do. <laughs> and I don't think we need to say that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so with the, you said that's the first thing you said. The nursing council coming. So which way was it? Two way street, or did you get off your chest at the nursing council what you wanted to say, or did they impart what you wanted to hear? Well, I think that they need a greater understanding of what it is to be a rural nurse and how boundaries are So what did you manage to say? Rural. What did you get off your chest to them? Well, they talked about the code of conduct mm -hmm. specifically, and they mm. talked about boundaries within the code of conduct, which we, we understand from a different point of view in rural. For example, that they used an example of buying a car off a patient. And as some of the nurses pointed out, you couldn't not buy a car off mm. the patient in some of our rural communities yeah. because there's nobody else living in those communities who could sell you a car. Yeah. Yeah. And um, going to the supermarket, as we all know in rural, it can be a fraught experience going to the supermarket. And I don't think they really understood that part of our practice and that part of our lives and that intermeshing that goes on. Well, well done for getting that point across. Mm. That, that's fantastic. And, yeah. uh, I'm pleased after, what, 23 World GP Network conferences, uh, <laughs> we finally got there. That's, yeah. uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, so and they were well very done. keen to attend, very yes. obliging. Mm. So it was just putting the offer out there, really, that, that has started the dialogue. And I, I dare say there'll be more. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So where to from here for that concept, do you think? Well, it's, it's more about dialogue, isn't it? Yeah, well, I did suggest that as a group to mm. someone upstairs earlier that maybe we get together and put mm. together a little bit of, mm. a, of a dialogue mm. from our perspective and then possibly mm. submit that. Um, the other thing that came up was the um, nurse prescribing documents that they've put out there as well. So, um, again, that's just a conversation around potential Nurse prescri registered nurses prescribing based on the pilot mm. that they've been doing with the diabetes nurses prescribing. Anyways, yeah. yeah, they didn't have enough time to really no. look at that in detail, which yeah. was unfortunate because we did spend some time with some of our other people talking about their research um, that Jean Ross and Tonya mm. Kemp from Waimati had done. Very good. Now, you did mention Jean Ross, and she, she was Skyped, and I yes, believe. Though, yes, oh, yes. That's the theme of this conference, isn't yeah. it? They're getting connected, so she did yeah. that in style. Yeah, and and what, what, what message did she have to give yeah. to you? Yeah. I think um, she was looking at how we perceive ourselves within the communities that we work and the work that we do. So um, there were some key terms. Yes, uh, she, yeah, she did. She talked about connectedness, knowing and being known in yeah. rural communities. And um, again, those same themes came out through everybody who, who spoke at that conference. We all had the same things to say perhaps from a slightly different angle, mm. um, but mm. everybody was, was talking about the lack of anonymity, the being connected within the community, mm. and um, the work that we do within that. Mm. that that's very good. Mm. Now, unfortunately, we've got to have Joe off the stage um, in a very short while. But uh, Joe, the very, uh, have you got any thoughts on um, what we've talked about with nurses seriously relying on them hugely uh, for, for, um, uh, for, for keeping us afloat? 
the um, general practice teams uh, are necessary in communities and um, general practice teams uh, involve uh, people from a whole range of uh, professions all working together and um, the you know nurses are the as you said the absolute backbone of that um, the um, and yeah we it, people couldn't access good quality health care without uh, access to good quality nursing the it's something I, I, I think um, you know we, we, we really need to focus on um, the nursing workforce nursing training um, over the next uh, over the coming years uh, because it 's seen by the government as being a major resource um, and there 's a sense that nurses are in general are perhaps not working at the peak of their scope mm -hmm. um, and you know I think that we might sort of discuss mm -hmm. whether they are or they 're not really mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, there's a there 's a challenge there um, and um, the there certainly is a, a, um, lots of potential um, for, uh, for, for, for a greater level of service delivery, I think, mm. um, from general practice teams as a whole. You know, mm. the n doctors need to work at the peak of their scope. Pharmacists need to, need to work mm. at the peak of their scope. Um, we, we all need to step up. Um, mm. th there's an oncoming onslaught of uh, chronic disease mm. and uh, population in, in uh, rural communities that's going to need to be helped. Mm. Mm. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Joe, I'm sorry you've got to leave us. I know you've got a busy schedule, but thank you very much indeed again for coming. Okay. And, uh, we appreciate that. Thank God you. Bless you. Thank you. So, um, we've, so we've had Jean and we've had the Nursing mm -hmm. Council. What other highlights from the nursing um, perspective have you got from, uh, from this? The dialogue. Yes. You know, the, the dialogue amongst us, because we don't get that opportunity here. And mm. the, this um, conference allows us to yeah. sit and actually talk about the issues. And, and look at how we can change into the future. That's and, um, awesome. And you feel so that's maturing with this conference probably more than any other? Yeah, is this is the second yeah. year we've offered the yeah. forum. Yes. Yeah. So prior to that, there wasn't, you didn't have those, that time set aside for nurses to, I mean, you could do it over a coffee or a drink yes. or whatever, but, you know, to all of it, and if anything, it's now just be building up those numbers. Right. So yeah. That, yeah. Right. yeah. And, and showing leadership within that and enabling mm -hmm. nurses to talk about the things that are, are barriers within enabling them to work mm -hmm. at the top of their scope and doing something about that, feeding that back to our regulatory body mm -hmm. so that we can now look at what impedes us and how we might overcome some of those barriers. Mm, yeah. That's a fair point. Mm, and good. we were talking about this before, but um, certainly um, the devolution of work, in effect, from the secondary to the primary sector and the, the need for an expanded workforce. Mm. And as Joe pointed out, and uh, with RANS, hopefully we can coordinate that. But as I said before, the nursing is a huge part of that. Do you think you're ready for that, um, volume-wise and training-wise and everything else? I think there's some infrastructure that needs to be put in place particularly some of the rural issues that we, we have in terms of having relief cover so that we can attend education sessions, um, enabling time and energy in people's busy lives to be able to do some of that, having the ability to have education pitched at the level that we're at. So we've got, rural nurse, we've got registered nurses, we've got rural nurse specialists and we've got nurse practitioners and each group has a slightly different need for a different level of, of education and input and so we need to think about how we d do that in rural and how we keep connected. For example peer review, how do you do peer review in rural? H how do you talk to other people who just know what your issues are and what you're dealing with? And that's very different in an urban environment to what it is in a rural environment. That's a beautifully put. So we've only unfortunately just got a couple more minutes left. Um, I did this with Chai Chua, um, and um, I'm going to do this to you now as well. I want you to imagine I'm a fairy godmother, which is very easily to do. Uh, and you've each got one wish. Um, so uh, who wants to have the first wish? So you cast a wish for <laughs> a wish a wish for nursing. Yes, I'll take your point. Yeah. For nursing and rural health. <laughs> I have to be specific on that one. <laughs> You're very right. Yeah. Uh, um, um, but probably to have those those tiers of nurses recognize and have that education and that support you know infiltrated into what we do so that you're not feeling quite so out there on a limb sometimes and that that communication and that dialogue could be stronger so that's a realistic yeah. wish Jen. Yeah. yeah I know it is <laughs> good on you well done <laughs> you're an unrealistic wish if you like <laughs> so Sharon what, what would your wish be mine's 
are very similar, and mine's around integration. Mine's around integration in practice between our medical colleagues, our pharma pharmacological mm. colleagues, our physiotherapists, our OTs, our, our housing court colleagues, the whole, the whole lot. I want to see integration, I want to see holism, and I want to see an education system that recognises and supports oh, that. And I want the mana that my work deserves to have within rural practice. Mm. I'm not invisible, I don't want to be invisible, and mm. I want to stand up and claim what is ours, how we work with our rural communities. Mm. That's wonderful. And I asked Joe this mm. question as well. But um, uh, so, is, is the world of rural nursing in, in good heart? Do you think? In good heart. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just know how to magnify that, did yeah. you? <laughs> that is wonderful. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you coming. I yeah. uh, appreciate you just being here. Good work. And, uh, and, um, and I appreciate the hard work you're doing. And as Joe said, um, you're not invisible. Uh, and uh, yeah. I think the, the yeah. Royal General Practitioner and mm. Practice Network uh, hugely values being on board. And I'm thrilled yeah, that you're support. covering the ground you're covering. Mm. Uh, that, that's awesome. Mm. Uh, so thank you very much indeed. Thank now, you what guys. I'd love you to do, if you could, if you could just slide a little bit that way, because uh, the next guest is um, Rata, who is... Um, um, uh, uh, sorry, do forgive me, Tani, who's um, uh, working for the um, uh, ministry with the new health promotion agency. <coughs> so, um, so um, Tani, please come on, come on board. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Hey, it's, it's nice Walter. to meet you. Hey, yes. Bless you. And um, I um, only heard about you only on this morning, and uh, and we all went, gosh, that, that's wonderful, uh, and mm -hmm. welcome. Uh, and need to say, we're fascinated in what what you're involved with, and uh, I would love to know precisely what it involved, and uh, and how do we get on board with it. Okay, um, the Health Promotion Agency is um, established under legislation to lead and support national health promotion activities and um, our aim is to inspire New Zealanders to lead healthy lifestyles. So um, obviously it's a big job and um, we can't really do it on our own so uh, we try and establish a range of partnerships and relationships with um, um, practices, um, academics, um, government agencies, councils, um, communities and all sorts of others so it's quite a big range of areas that we operate on. Um, we also have uh, a range of uh, program areas and things like um, alcohol, tobacco control, immunisation, rheumatic fever, um, health education resources, uh, sun safety, uh, nutrition, physical activity. So there's a whole, whole bunch of areas that we um, are responsible to uh, manage under our mandate. That's, that's wildly impressive. <laughs> so how, how new are you? Um, we've uh, heard about you today. But yeah, yeah. Uh, we were established under legislation. We, we, we came into being on the 1st of July last year. Well so, we've, yeah, we're pretty new. We've been through a, um, with a combination of a merger between the old um, ALEC and the Health Sponsorship Council, and also some of the functions of the ministry come in. So all bring us all together under one roof. So you've got a big job ahead, is it? Yep. Is, have you a very large team? Um, there's probably about um, 70 FTEs in the right. organisation, so right. it's a reasonable size. Right. So, yeah. so you'll, be, you'll be networking, obviously. Um, you won't be doing this Furiously? On your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm, again, you know, because we're, we've been a merger of two organisations, um, We've got established relationships in a number of areas, but I think in terms of the, um, from a rural health perspective, we've got to grow more relationships. And yeah, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very good point. We, we're always um, paralysed with the tyranny of time and distance, really, in the, yeah. in the rural sector. Yeah. So, um, how are you addressing that? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, I guess the challenge for us is um, because we're operating at a national level, uh, often um, probably a lot of the um, rural people see our messages through mass media and, mm. and through the brochures and, mm. and, and resources that we try and um, get out to the health sector. Uh, right. We were just talking yesterday in a mm. nursing forum around, okay, we'd love to work more closely with the um, um, rural GP network and try and get more engagement, more uh, activities with that uh, group and ha help influence the design and implementation of our programs. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So good opportunity. In, yeah. <coughs> so in that regard, I, mean, I presume you, you, you guys will be working very closely um, yeah, with, with you guys yeah. to, to yeah. that end. Um, so um, I presume you will be networking with the rural nurses to 
uh, are they your agents in effect? Uh, or, or we, we, haven't, we haven't um, established that um, relationship yet. Mm. We've, yeah. well, I mean, we've got, yeah, we're trying to do it through, through this, yeah, through informal mm. Mm. contacts. Mm. And well, I'm glad you're introducing us to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all happens here at the conference, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, superb. Well, well done. That's brilliant. I suppose to that end, um, a fair question is how can we help you do what is a, obviously a, a desperately important job? Yeah, well, uh, again, for us, it's probably more of what, what, how can we um, help help the sector? And I think mm. what we have is an opportunity where we've got all these mm. things under one roof. Mm -hmm. If we try and um, look at doing things that span across them, if we can try and work network in mm. with mm. Um, the sector in places that the other former organisations weren't doing in the past, mm. Mm. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, we yeah just talking, mm. finding out mm. what's happening, finding out what the um, what people actually want, mm -hmm. um, and also, um, you know, like I'm, I've been talking to people about creating like a national hub of information around, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many different groups out there with lots mm -hmm. of different information, and so, you know, we're going to we're starting to connect with a lot of those different players. So, mm -hmm. I think that's an opportunity that we can try and um, draw on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had knowledge that Rome wasn't built in a day, but um, yeah. so, so you've got a long way to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was no reference thought on you, Pope. The, um, <laughs> um, but uh, what barriers are you hitting at the moment, uh, if any, um, especially with the rural sector? Yeah, well, again, I think because we're such a new organisation, then it's, it's um, yeah, we've got to develop the, um, you know, some other newer relationships, and mm -hmm. we don't have the broad depth and width that you really want to, in order to... Um, one influence and two to get feedback to mm -hmm. make sure that you're mm -hmm. doing things mm -hmm. um, properly or, or managing developing things that make a difference to yep. um, those different communities mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. that's probably the um, one of the biggest challenges for us and, and the others you know the fact that people just don't know who we are mm -hmm. um, but they've seen your brochures and yeah, your, they, they your advertising yeah, yeah they've seen some yeah, of that yeah yeah yeah, they, uh, yeah, that yeah. Although we haven't uh, um, explicitly identified ourselves no, on those, because no, our right. previous, um, you know, that's from our predecessors. So, oh, right. yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think some of the other challenges for us are? I'm just trying mm. to think. It's 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 putting some vim and vigor into health promotion. You mm. know, making it, it's kind of it's always there, but it's kind of bringing it back to the mm. forefront. I mean, your agency is actually, in my mind. It just is a bit of a prompt that, yes, this is important. We need yeah. to include this in our conversations with our patients. Mm. And, um, mm. you know, it, it's, it, those conversations start, well, with the nurses, doctors, you know, clinicians. And, and you're allowing and supporting us to do that. And Trying um, to create an environment to yeah. allow that conversation yeah. to yeah. take place so yeah. that people know or I mean, expect that. And, and the some of that has been very successful, some yeah. of the promotions that you've already done. Yeah. Have um, have enabled some of those conversations to happen, and and maybe it's just a, a matter of looking at a rural flavour for some mm. of those mm. promotions. And, and I, the other thing that stood out for me from the presentation yesterday was that the documents that underpin your agency are the Ottawa Charter and the um, Primary Healthcare Strategy, which are two really good pieces of work that kind of have mm. gotten a bit forgotten in this. You know, mm -hmm. 2013 or wherever oh, we are. I really appreciate you bringing it up. <laughs> so That's excellently done. Yeah, so, so that underpins what he's all about. Well, I'm delighted agency. to see you here at the yeah. conference. And uh, likewise, I think we know we've got these new um, runs as well, which I'm yeah. sure you've been invited to be involved yeah. if, if not already. Um, we've just got one minute to go. And in that very last minute, um, I'm just going to throw at you what I've thrown at the other people as well. If I was a fairy godmother and I gave you a, a magic wand and I could grant you one wish, um, <laughs> and uh, Deb corrected me before, this has to be involved in rural health. Um, there might be children watching this. Programs. Um, uh, so, for, for rural health, what would your one wish be? For rural health, um, I guess that people get the best um, value and service out of our our system, mm -hmm. that it delivers more effectively, and yeah, that people can get to it. So, mm -hmm. peace, love, and happiness. <laughs> Way to well. go! Yeah. Well, peace. Uh, you'll win this world next week. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, okay. certainly there is a beauty to what you're doing. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time. I'd like to thank all of you. Um, yeah, thank, uh, you. Thank, you. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, thank you very much indeed. And um, that wraps us up for today. And um, don't forget to tune in tomorrow um, when we'll uh, 
if nothing else, have Martin under myself giving the highlights of the conference and uh, what we got out of it. So thank you very much indeed for tuning in. Thank you. Sure. And thank you. Bless you. Thanks for coming. Take care. And thank you for coming thank too. You.